Hi, I'm Dana Cruikshank with the National Science Foundation. This past year, the world saw food riots and shortages break out around the globe. Millions of people found that food was either too expensive or too scarce. Now, computational scientists are working with plant biologists to help address this pressing problem. Joining me today is Dr. Ram Samundrala from the University of Washington and his colleague, Michael Gerquin. Uh, gentlemen, thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Dr. Samundrala, uh, perhaps you can give us an idea of how your research works. Yeah, basically uh, what we are trying to do is understand how an organism works, uh, how biological organisms work in general, and we use everything that we do is done by modeling. So we basically take all the information that experimental biologists produce and try to create an image in a computer or a representation in a computer that will capture that uh, what we see in reality. And we use a, a large number of CPUs to do this task, and uh, everything is done using model, kind of like weather forecasting. So it's done using modeling, and then we take the results that come out of our predictions from our algorithms, and then give them back to the biologists and see if we are correct or incorrect. I see. Now, now I understand that the computers are actually analyzing the uh, the rice DNA. Um, how how do the computers? How does this work exactly? Um, so basically, in your body, the DNA uh, specifies you as a person, and what we do is. Um, uh, we take uh, the, the basically genes are made up of DNA, and genes are the things that specify the blueprint. The DNA specifies the blueprint for the organisms, but actually the things that carry out all the instructions in the blueprint are uh, these molecules called proteins. Uh, one of which is shown here, right here, uh, and uh, on top in this colored image. And uh, these proteins are the workhorses of the body. And so we basically try to look at all proteins in a given organism and try to understand how these proteins. Uh, work individually and together to make the organism up. Oh, I see. Now, now I understand you're using a uh, distributed computing system. Uh, uh, how many computers approximately are being used? Okay, so initially we started with a grant from the NSF, a $2 million grant from the NSF, uh, using a, uh, we built up a cluster of 400 CPUs, and uh, we used that, and we realized that we were hitting our limits because there are a lot of, in rice, for example, there are 60,000 molecules. In the human, there's about 30,000 proteins that we're working on. And so... Um, uh, so we went to this World Community Grid. Uh, this is a project that is a philanthropic project that has been started by IBM uh, and that harnesses the power of millions of CPUs all over the world. And I think Mike can give you some of the technical details on that. Yeah, so yeah, we partnered with, with IBM to make this happen and uh, we were able to get our programs, the algorithms that we mentioned, to run on an environment that is applicable to the World Community Grid and that allowed us access to the millions of computers that are on the World Community Grid. Uh, the World Community Grid runs a number of projects. Ours is one of them. And right now we're harvesting about maybe 20% of the, the power of the World Community Grid. We're able to, to harness all that and make, make use of that in, uh, in addition to the 400 CPUs that we have. So it's a real nice jump in processing power. I see. And if, you, if this distributed computing network uh, wasn't available, how, how long would these computations take? Uh, I would say about, uh, I think the current estimate is about 200 years. Wow. So if we just used our 400 CPU cluster and didn't use this uh, hundreds of thousands of computers that we have access to, it would be about 200 years for yeah. this exact project, for the same project. Wow. So uh, when might we uh, expect to see some results from this research yeah, actually in the field? Uh, we are actually starting to get results, but in the field it will probably be more than two years, I would say, ma mainly because... It, for the project to finish, the project uh, the time is about two years, and then we have to give all our results. We've already given some of our results to to some of the plant biologists, but it takes them longer to implement. It's hard. It's longer to grow. It takes longer to grow rice, and uh, uh, than it is to model everything using a computer, which is why we do things with computers. And uh, this this particular project is to model, to understand rice at a very detailed atomic level. We want to understand every molecule, every atom in rice at the at the, at the end. Uh, at the end, and we are we are we have a you know we have a, made a significant progress in doing that uh, thanks to the grid and uh, thanks to our algorithms and thanks to people like Mike uh, who's, who's you know, running the show right there. Well, that's great. And uh, where would you like to go from here? Uh, well, what's next for this research? Uh, well, I mean, we, what our uh, research on rice can be extended to uh, other important crops such as maize and wheat, uh, which are also very important economically, and uh, and that addresses the sh food shortage problem. So we're basically like uh, hitting two birds with one stone. We are we are we are trying to address the world food nutrition problem and the shortage problem, the distribution problem, by giving all this information. So all this information will be made publicly available, and uh, rice research institutes, which you collaborate with, all over the world can use this information to tell farmers in the end 
uh, what to do or to uh, give them seeds that are suitable to their local environments. So we solved the distribution problem, which is related to world hunger, and we also solved the nutrition problem of eating only rice or wheat or one particular kind of crop. So, so we are, yeah, we are, this, this is where we would like to see this research go in the future. Yeah. Well, uh, Dr. Samandrala and uh, Mr. Gerquin, uh, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you very much. And again, I'm Dana Crookshank from the National Science Foundation. Thanks for joining us.